It's the magic of math here, and today we're going to review how to subtract fractions, where we're going to write them as an addition problem. We're going to keep, change to addition, and add the opposite. Here's our lesson today. You, the student, will subtract rational numbers in fraction form. Rational numbers being positive and negative fractions. Here's what I'd like you thinking about today as we go through the lesson. Our question is, how are subtracting rational numbers in fraction form and subtracting integers similar? So what are the similarities between subtracting positive and negative fractions to positive and negative whole values? So all the whole numbers and their opposites, negative 1, negative 2, positive 1, positive 2. So let's apply what we know to fractions. Here is a procedural checklist on how to subtract rational numbers in fraction form. I'll also show you a graphic organizer to help you organize those steps and it to become habit. You can also purchase this organizer in the description of the video. So step one, if necessary, we're going to write mixed numbers as improper fractions. Best first step you can do. Step two, if necessary, we're going to rewrite fractions to have a common denominator. So when you add and subtract, this is a must. Step three, again, if necessary, we're going to rewrite the subtraction as addition, keep the first number the same, change subtraction sign to addition, and change the sign of the second number to its opposite. So all the problems in this video, we will do this rule because it's all going to be subtraction. Step four, Add the numerators using integer rules and keep the denominator. So remember our integer rules. If they have the same signs, we're going to find the absolute value of the numerators, add, then use the common sign from the original numerators. So same sign, add the absolute value, and take on that sign that existed. Different signs, find the absolute value of the numerators. We're going to subtract the smaller absolute value from the larger absolute value. And then we're going to use the sign of the numerator that had the largest absolute value. So much different when we add and subtract than when we multiply and divide. And our last step, step five, if necessary, we're going to simplify our fraction. All right, here we go. Let's go apply these. Here is our graphic organizer. We're going to practice. We're going to subtract 8 fifths, subtract 7 fifteenths. So this is what would be presented to you. Now let's go put it on our graphic organizer. So this or we'll just organize our work and the best thing you can do is always show all five steps if they're necessary. So step one, we're going to write mixed numbers as improper fractions. That's not necessary here. They're already improper fractions. So step one, we don't need to do. Let's move over to step two. If necessary, we're going to rewrite to have a common denominator. So let's look at our denominators. They're five and 15. That's not common. But 5 is a factor of 15. If I multiply 5 by 3, I get 15. What I do to this denominator, I must do to this numerator. So let's do that math. 8 times 3 is 24, all over our common denominator of 15. And then we're going to bring down our subtraction sign and our second value, which is 7 over 15. Over here, we're going to step 3. If necessary, rewrite a sub subtraction as addition. It is subtraction. So step one, we're going to keep the first number the same. So the first number is 24 fifteenths. If I were you, I would circle it so that you know that you've taken care of it. You have three parts, a first number, a subtraction sign, and a second number. Number two, we're going to change subtraction to addition. So subtract becomes add. Step three, we're going to change the sign of the second number to its opposite. Here's our second number. It's positive. We're going to make it negative, and I'm going to keep the negative sign in the numerator. We're going to keep the denominators both positive 15. Moving on to step four, we're going to add the numerators using integer rules and keep the denominator. So let's go look at our numerators. We have positive 24 and negative 7. Those are different signs. So we're going to find the absolute value of the numerators and subtract the smaller absolute value from the larger and take on the sign of the larger. So coming up to our problem, we have the absolute value of 24 is 24, and the absolute value of negative 7 is 7. So this is the larger, so we know that this is going to be positive. 
and we're going to subtract 7 from 24, which gives us 17. All right, now we've got to keep the denominator. So our denominator is 15, we keep it. Moving on to step 5, if necessary, we're going to simplify. 7 fifteenths is in simplest form. I would take this from students. Your teacher might want you to write it as a mixed number. 15 goes into 17 once with 2 left over. So 17 fifteenths or 1 and 2 fifteenths. These are equivalent. All right, it's your turn. I'm going to ask you to find the difference. 1 and 3 fourths subtract negative 2 and 2 thirds. So you're going to pause the video here. Let me show you the graphic organizer in case you want to work off of that. Pause the video here, do all five steps, and then come back to see my work. Good luck. Welcome back. So step one, if necessary, write mixed numbers as improper fractions. This is necessary. So let's review how to do that. Four times one plus three is seven fourths, and we're going to subtract. Then over here, 3 times 2 is 6, plus 2 is 8, and we have negative 8 thirds. Step 2. Now we're going to rewrite our fractions to have a common denominator if it's necessary. We look at our denominators, we have 4 and 3. Those don't have common factors between them, so we're going to multiply both the numerator and denominator here by 3 to force a common denominator. And here, I'm going to multiply both the denominator and the numerator by 4. So by doing that, I will force a common denominator of 12. So let's do the math. 7 times 3 is 21 over our 12. Bring down your subtract. 8 times 4 is 32 over our common denominator of 12. And remember, it was negative. Step 3, we're going to rewrite subtraction as addition. Step 1, keep the first number the same. First number the same. Change subtraction sign to addition. Here's our subtraction sign. We're changing that to addition. And our third, change the sign of the second number to its opposite. Here it's negative 32 twelfths, so it's going to become positive 32 twelfths when we rewrite it. Adding positive 32 twelfths is the same as subtracting negative 32 twelfths. So now that we have addition, we can just go back and review our adding rules and we're all set to go. So step four, we're going to add the numerators using integer rules and keep the denominator. So let's look at our numerators, see if they're same sign or different. They are the same sign. So we're going to the same signs rule where we're going to find the absolute values of the numerators, add, and keep the common sign. So these are both positive, so that means my sum is going to be positive. So let's add them. 21 plus 32 is 53, and we're going to keep our denominator. Our denominator is 12, bring it down. Step 5, let's simplify. This is in simplest form, or you can write it as a mixed number. 12 goes into 53 four times. So either 53 twelfths or 4 and 5 twelfths. Here's another one for you. Find the difference. Negative 4 and 3 eighths subtract. 8 and 1 half. Again, I'm going to show you the graphic organizer. Go ahead and pause the video here, do your best work, and come back to check. Good luck. Welcome back. Let's review. So step one, if necessary, write mixed numbers as improper fractions. These are mixed numbers. So we're going to have 8 times 4 is 32, plus 3 is 35 eighths. And I put the negative sign in the numerator. Bring down our subtraction sign, and then 2 times 8 is 16, plus 1 is 17 over our denominator of 2. And this was positive, so subtract positive. All right, step 2, if necessary, rewrite the fractions to have a common denominator. We do not have a common denominator. We have a denominator of 8 and a denominator of 2. But 2 is a factor of 8, and 2 times 4 will give me 8. What I do to this denominator, I must do to the numerator. So let's rewrite. So we're going to keep the first fraction, negative 35 over 8, bring down your subtract, and then we're going to multiply. And 17 times 4 is 68, 2 times 4 is 8, now we have a common denominator. Step 3, we're going to rewrite subtract as add addition. So step 1, we're going to keep the first number the same, 
bring it down. Step two, subtract becomes add. And step three, we want to add the opposite. So the second number is positive. When I rewrite it, it's going to be negative. Negative 68 over 8, and we should keep that negative sign in the numerator. Now we're ready to add the numerators. So we're going to add using our integer rules. So let's go look. We have the same sign, so we're going to this rule. We're going to add the absolute values and keep the common sign. So they're both negative, so we're going to keep the negative sign in our numerator. 35 and 68 have a sum of 103, and then we want to keep the denominator, so we're going to realize that's 8 and keep it. Now we're going to look to simplify. Negative 103 over 8 is in simplest form, but we could write it as a mixed number if your teacher wants you to. So 8 goes into 103 12 times with 7 left over. So negative 12 and 7 eighths is equivalent to negative 103 eighths. All right, one more for you. Negative 9 24 subtract negative 5 6 I'm going to stop here and see if you have enough work on your paper to lead you through the steps. Go ahead and pause. Come back when you're ready. Welcome back. So I brought over our problem into our graphic organizer. Step one, let's rewrite any mixed numbers in proper fractions. Not necessary in this problem, we can skip that step and go on to step two. If necessary, rewrite fractions to have a common denominator. We can see that we need to do that. Six is a factor of 24. Six times four is 24. What I do to the denominator, I must do to the numerator. So let's bring down negative nine over 24 our subtraction sign, and then we have 5 times 4 is 20, all over our common denominator of 24, and don't forget that negative sign. Step 3, we're going to rewrite subtraction as addition. We're going to keep that first number the same, negative 9 over 24. We're going to change subtraction to addition. Subtract becomes addition. And our third step, change the second number to the opposite. So instead of negative 20 over 24, we have positive 20 over 24. And now we can use our adding rules. So in step four, we're going to add the numerators using those integer rules. We have two different signs. So we're going to the different signs rule. We're going to find the absolute values of the numerators and subtract the smaller absolute value from the larger absolute value, keeping the sign of the larger. So the absolute value of negative 9 is 9. The absolute value of 20 is 20. So our sum is going to be positive because this is the larger absolute value. Then 20 subtract 9 gives you 11. We're going to keep our denominator, which is 24. Bring that down. So we have 11 24 Step 5, if necessary, simplify. That's not necessary. That's in simplest form. 11 24 is the difference to our original problem. And there you have it. That is how we subtract fractions by writing as addition and using our add the opposite rule. Thanks for joining me today at The Magic of Math, where we continue to master math one video at a time. Hope you have a great day and come back soon.